Welcome to Minor Details. I'm Nick. And I'm James. And we are two industrial designers in the big city. Sweating the small stuff. It's been a bit. It has been a bit. Yeah, we, we took a little break. We had a read back uh, just for a quick uh, quick little... Uh, a quick little save the world episode. Quick little save the world. I'll <laughs> tell you what, that episode definitely got a lot of chat in the yeah. Discord. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of different viewpoints in there, but... Uh, yeah, I appreciate Reed coming on. I don't does Reed Reed listens occasionally, right? I think he I think he listens all the time. Yeah. Maybe? Right, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he listens when he's on for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well he's the one doing it. But uh I've been man. I've been pretty good. I see you've <laughs> I see you've written down my updates. I've written down a lot of updates. <laughs> oh, we, we had a lovely meetup. Yeah, we had our first little low-key design meetup in New York. Uh, we didn't talk about it on the pod. We probably should uh, plan our next one so that we can announce it on the podcast. Too. Yeah. Um, but we had we had a good crew show up. How many, Like 15 people? Yeah, around there. I mean, it was awesome to meet everyone. I mean, you know, we, we wanted to do something. We've been thinking about this for a while, of just like hanging out in New York, some sort of... I, I think f- I want to do it on a somewhat regular basis. Maybe yeah. it's like... A quarterly or maybe even you know bi-monthly or something so we can see everybody's figures <laughs> yeah like, yeah yeah what are your sales figures <laughs> are you bringing, how many pins have you sold what how much revenue are you bringing in yeah exactly <laughs> um no it's fun, it's fun you're not supposed cool. to cover his region okay <laughs> your bed sty <laughs> your crown heights all the design neighborhoods yeah um or the new york neighborhoods although they could be design neighborhoods I think I think we're turning Bed Stuy into a design neighborhood, man. What is the design Reed, language? Reed of, moved to Bed Stuy. What is the design language of Bed Stuy oh, versus Crown know. Heights? I don't know. I mean, Reed Reed converted from a Crown Heights to Bed Stuy. I know. Well, we got a little crazy up in Crown Heights. <laughs> um. So that's fun. That's fun. We'll try to update you guys next on the next meetup. Yeah. Um. And I don't know. You've been up to some things, James. Yep, I've been I've been working on I just got the latest sample of my new bottle opener. Oh right. So you're you're making a new did you talk about this last time? Or is I don't this know. is it been a bit? It it's been a little bit, but I don't know if I talked about this one or not. But it's um it's actually a bottle opener that was a part of the iterative process to find the uh the Wayne bottle opener right. that I, that I'm producing uh, under the Edor brand, but uh, and and like a bunch of people called it out, and it is one that I thought was kind of cool. It's more of the bar blade style, right? Yeah, exactly. It has a longer handle to it. And so, you know, after I got that response, I got a metal one printed because that's just that easy. With you know, we're not sponsored by Shapeways, but it is that easy. <laughs> and so I got one in, and I posted it, and people were they really ready digging it. So this one, <laughs> I thought I had all the dimensions right on it. Yeah. And then I went to go open a <gasps> bottle and like the back of it literally like went over the back no. of the cap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I had to do some adjustment, but now it works. Okay. Um, and so I'm probably going to be ordering uh, a handful of them soon to, uh, to go up for sale. Ooh. All right. Uh, and then I'm also you know, working on this helicopter poster. Wait, before we go, before we move to the poster, yeah. can I do some uh, digging on your ball upper? Yeah, sure. I uh, I think I messaged you a little bit about this, but so the, the what are you going to call this one? The barbell. It, you know, it's like similar concept to the Wayne ball opener where it's a pipe that kind of splits open. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one is a pipe that comes around and down to the handle. Yeah. Um, and the end of the pipe is closed off. Yeah. So it doesn't feel like a pipe anymore. And I really still like the open pipe style design. (laughs) So this design has like more of like a a rounded closed off end. Yeah. So, I mean, I thought about that for a bit, like whether I wanted to keep the pipe aesthetic or whether I wanted to close it off. And yeah, we had a back and forth about it. My feeling is, is that I want to move away from, especially with this brand, I want to move away from designs that reference like a material, like, like the know, pipe, like yeah, the manufacturing kind of, yeah. Like I don't, I don't necessarily want there to be remnants of like what are design decisions that are made because of 
constraints like from the manufacturing like traditional manufacturing because this is 3d printing right and so i want these things to feel sort of fully realized and the other thing that i'm doing you know obviously this thing has kind of a loop to it but i know that for myself i was sitting there being like i would never want to hang it from the metal loop like we have these like metal hooks Mm -hmm. or like you know you could imagine somebody hanging on a nail or something And it just doesn't feel right. Like it's just like a lot of metal on metal contact. And so I actually am, um, there's going to be a leather loop that comes out of the bottom. Okay. So that's going to be the finishing touch for this bottle opener. Is the leather loop kind of like an echo of the necklace type of leather? Is it kind of like similar style or is it going to be smaller? Is it much smaller probably? It's more, it's the flat leather. Mm. It's like the, like the flat thin. Okay leather so almost uh, like instead just of the rounded leather like almost like a yeah like a strap or something yeah like that. okay um so yeah and and also i've for this one i have a couple of secondary iterations in mind of like different ways of doing the leather mm. like i you know these are so i think i've said before on the podcast about how with this brand i don't want to just like make one version of something like I could make different versions of of one product every like two weeks if I wanted to. Right. And so I have ideas about like how I might treat the leather differently and have it be incorporated into the design differently. Interesting. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm thinking I'm probably going to order like 10 of these. Okay. And, you know, we'll see how people feel about it. Um, but uh, that's the plan. And uh, it's almost like each one's unique. It's like it almost each one's has its special character to it. Right. And I mean, each one, because of the 3D printing, each one is like kind of unique. Right. Um, they're going to be slightly different. Hmm. So, yeah, it's uh, so, yeah, uh, be on the lookout. I'll probably announce that soon. The other thing that I'm working on is the helicopter poster. So of, you know, from my helicopter series. And that's also going to be sold under Edor because I can imagine a world in which I finally figure out how to manufacture one of the helicopters. Uh, and I just yeah, like, yeah. I want, you know, I like Edor. I don't think that these things are separate. I feel like it's just the design objects that I'm, I love that I've produced. Right. Of that course. I want to put out into the world. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I, uh, and I also feel like this is a, it's going to be a like a more accessible price point like the, the poster is yeah right yeah um from the bottle openers so i think this will be are you looking at like any pr- specific processes for printing the posters mm. i mean you know there's you could al- always do like just you know direct to consumer like drop shipping yeah or do you want to have like a set number screen print are you still kind of exploring that well i can't do screen printing unless i really reduce the complexity of the imagery right okay um so right now this iteration i'm actually going to this this printer that i went to for my all my wedding stationery okay he's he's local in new york city he's got a print shop um and so i already have a relationship with him he does really nice quality prints and so yeah i've like gotten a few samples made i the one thing that's been tricky is like getting the renderings getting this whole thing to like uh just look nice and clean because like the first the first one that i did with the orange it like all the renderings had these kind of it looked like watermarks or like blotches and i think it was just because i was saving them i like i did wasn't saving them at a high enough quality Mm -hmm. out of photoshop okay and um so that's been a process of like figuring out how to get the best image out of these i love when yeah i mean whenever you do those like side projects like this and you're like tackling those like small details you always go down this rabbit hole of like discovering something that you didn't even realize oh yeah and it's like oh i should be saving in like tiff format or whatever it is well i want to hear your opinion on Mm -hmm. this because i feel like since starting the like the whole edor brand yeah i feel like i have gained a far deeper appreciation for every other aspect of the business outside of like design for sure whenever i go like now 
now I know what a privilege it is that in a normal job, all we have to do is focus on design. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, I totally agree, man. I almost yeah. feel like everybody should have the experience of like starting an LLC, like keeping track of their finances, like, or like, you know, rounding up all of this stuff that it takes to start to sell something because then you go into a job and you're like, all I have to do is design. Yeah, yeah, right. You know? And then other people have to do all that other stuff that you don't like. I know. It's... I, I was, uh, I think I was on the Discord the other day and someone was like, oh, you have to renew your LLC. And I was like, what? I have to renew it? <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, again, led me down this rabbit hole realizing that I think my LLC is almost out of date. <laughs> um, so I got to look into that. Yeah. It's on my list of things I think to do. It's, I think when I signed up for Legal Zoom, Zoom, I signed up for like automatic renewal or something like that. That's smart. That is um, smart. Yeah. Yeah. So, I did mine the frugal boy way and like watched a YouTube video and it said like go to this government website. Yeah. Um, and I still, you know, I think it worked. Yeah. I, I just get like overly anxious about that kind of stuff and I'm just like. I need to find somebody who will just take care of it all for me. Yeah. And I'm probably paying more than I should. You well, know? I think, I mean, I think it's good because I think we're also in a little bit of two different scenarios. Like for me right now, I, if I got sued and I lost all my money, <laughs> <laughs> it would suck, of course. But it like, you know, I, I'm confident that I could just go out. <laughs> IRS! IRS, open up! The IRS is coming after me, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm confident like I could start again, but like, I understand like you have, you know, you have a wife yet. There's other obligations there. So, yeah. um, yeah, I definitely do need to up my game a little bit and check on my, <laughs> check on my, uh, legal stuff. I wouldn't want you to lose all your money, Nick. <laughs> um, yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah. Uh, and I, you know, I feel like I've gone on for a long time now, but I guess I have been gone for a while. Yeah, I mean, but it's, I, it's a good catch-up episode. But uh, yeah, I was I was also just out in L.A. for my uh, brother-in-law's 40th birthday bonanza. Yeah. It's pretty fun. Happy birthday, Lee. You were in L.A. like a couple months ago, weren't you? Yeah. So Are we, you becoming a bi-coastal boy? <laughs> I wish. No, it was one of those situations where this is, the, this is the great part about, you know, freelancing is... We got this invite like two weeks before the party and we were like, you know, I think that they just send it to us as a courtesy and we were like, you know what? Let's do we it. We could go, yeah, yeah. you know, why not? And so we just, we decided to go out there and it was a great decision. It was a great time. Got to see um, a bunch of family and like coincidentally, just a lot of people were in LA this past weekend for whatever reason, including our friend, Sean Davidson. And, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was great. I mean, I LA to, is, LA is a beautiful town. I need to give LA a good visit. Yeah. I mean, I've always had the, the, the assumption that I would, I don't like LA, but I've only been there for one day. So I really need to like visit like, and like really do this yeah. this stuff. Well, I feel like it, LA can be kind of just as diverse a place as New York, but right. it's also a lot more spread out. Right, it's the and driving. S- and so it's, I feel like it's kind of difficult to take it all in. But uh, I'm like, like really impressed with downtown LA. And there's like just a ton of really beautiful buildings down there. And some of them are just like abandoned. And I mean, it seems like the town is revitalizing the the architecture down there but there's this one building i'm trying to remember because i wrote it on joey joey zelliman's uh like bad design i think it's called like the eastern commercial yeah or eastern columbia building Hmm. um but it's like it's very much i don't know the style yeah it's like art deco but there's like there's a are you an art deco person i am totally an art deco person I think, I think um, this is something that I've been thinking about a lot is just that I feel like a lot of what's missing and lacking in a lot of modern design is this sense of optimism and mm. uh, aspiration. Yeah. And I feel like Art Deco has, has that feeling. I mean, that was the roaring 20s, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so this like 
you know, this building is just like a stunning. It's teal. It's teal and gold. Oh, it's teal. I mean, what kind of building is it? Like, it's a skyscraper and it's teal. That's yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah. And apparently, I didn't know that it has like this. I guess it has a rooftop pool. I can't tell if some of these are like <laughs> renderings or not. I but... have a, um. Oh, I have a friend, Stephen Ken. He does a does some furniture. He has, I believe, a warehouse in downtown LA. Nice. And has like his studio there, and then he opens up the back door, and he has these like Saturday coffee shop. Things. Oh, nice. I mean, the beautiful thing about LA, or really just anywhere besides New York, <laughs> is that there's space, so you can like. Right. I have like meetups and like he has like a showroom and I don't know, it's cool. Yeah. I don't know much about the LA design scene and I would love to go out and visit just to get a sense of that. Yeah. I think our boy Matt B. White is, is, he, uh, is, he in, is, LA? is in LA. If the that inf- other guy. Infamous Matt B. White. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a good trip. I think that's an episode one joke, right? That's, I think it's like episode that's, five. That's OG. That is an OG joke. Go back. Uh, I, I'm, OGJ. I, 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 need a, I need a really... Oh, I want to do a PSA for a second. PSA about yeah. OGJs? Well, I just want to do... Hey, this is Nick from the future. If you're listening to this, go listen to our latest episode because we're probably in VR right now. We're doing something crazy. <laughs> so I just want you guys to be up to date and be involved in the community. All right. Because right. I, I, I also need to put that PSA in, in front of the first episodes oh. because I, i'm getting these messages of like oh yeah i'm on episode 30 and i'm like oh guys episode 30 like we have a voicemail now we have the discord now you know like <laughs> well i i mean i think there's a lot of people that when they discover a new podcast and especially one that doesn't have like hundreds of episodes they will go back to the beginning and listen all the way through up to like current day right you know but so that's, that's the thing is like there's someone that's been listening for three months now and are on episode 30 and i want them i want them up with us you know just like listen to the last one and then you can go back and listen to the yeah last but one. then they they don't ha- maybe have background for like og jokes and you know like they want to know they want right. to they want to get deep into it all right um but yeah and uh so what else is there it is uh, it is in- inktober oh yeah yeah um yeah i'm not doing anything are you doing anything for inktober <laughs> i also mom for Ink- inktober is when everyone posts a sketch a day on instagram for do october you, do you know the the origin of inktober i assume it's from like more illustration this right? guy the, i believe it was started by this guy jake parker who is uh, a comic book artist yeah he, i made up inktober <laughs> it's in his bio <laughs> but He's a he, he's a really awesome comic book artist. Oh, that's cool. And so the whole idea behind Inktober, especially for illustrators um, and comic book artists, was to enhance his inking skills because that is a big part of like the illustration world. Right, is inking, and so it was like a originally a challenge for himself, and he broadened it to be this like instagram wide challenge i did inktober like i've always attempted inktober one of my better attempts was doing a bunch of like zelda gear mm. for inktober oh i remember that if you scroll back far enough I remember and i stuff. yeah i mean i um i was trying to do it all with marker and the like halfway through the markers that i were you that i was using just like completely ran out of ink yeah for and sure. And they weren't markers that I could get. I don't know. I just was like, I gave up, basically. <laughs> it was it was like, they were work markers. And they were, what What are the ones that are like really toxic? Uh, AD markers? Yeah, they were those AD markers. But um, but yeah, so I've, I've attempted many times to do Inktober. And it's, it is a challenge. Yeah, so here's like. Oh, some yeah. of the, some of the Zelda yeah, we're looking at James's illustrations that Zelda I, boots that I did the Ocarina of Time, the slingshot, um, and uh, I yeah I'm not big on Inktober. I think I did it one year. One can, year? Maybe I did. Maybe I did the first year. I mean, you're like, I'm Nick <laughs> Baker. You don't tell me what to do. <laughs> no, no, I I I've just I you know I. I think I'm focusing a lot more on other things nowadays um, right? and using Instagram as more of just a place for, for fun. Yeah. Um, as, as opposed to the daily posts. 
Right. Daily posting is hard, man. It's very hard. But, and... I, but I've been digging your Inktober stuff because you got this kind of a uh, translucent notepad, iPad note thing going on as usual. Yeah. You said there was new iPad. Did you have the new, did you download the new Apple Notes? I have the iOS new 13? Apple Notes. Yeah. Is there a difference? Do you like there, it better? There is, there are some, some differences. Okay. Um, there's, there's a couple big ones. One is traditionally with the Notes app, like you could only erase objects. So like if you drew a line, like that was considered an right. object and yeah. you would just erase the whole thing. So if you wanted to erase like just a little bit of the line, yeah. it would delete the whole thing. Now right. they have a pixel eraser. Uh, okay. um, and the other thing they have is a selection tool. So you can select and move things. Mm. And you can also, when you select something, you can change the color of that thing. So you can go into like the color okay. color block area, choose a new color, it'll change it. Man. And, uh, and it also has a ruler. Okay. I think those are the major changes I like that I um, have been noticed using. so far. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I'm really trying to like, even though I'm gonna try to finish this Inktober, I'm not stressing about doing overly complicated posts. Yeah, I mean, the simple posts you're doing are really nice. Yeah, so they're just know. quick. Thank they you. Fun. Thank you. So anyway, uh, but. You're, what are you doing? Your VR sketching these days? I've been, I've been drinking LaCroix. <laughs> Welcome. It's our first sponsor. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually been, oh, I was on the Discord. Let me tell you a story. I was on the Discord the other day. Um, Let me tell you something. And we started talking about, oh, we have a health and wellness section on the Discord. Oh, yeah. So that's my, you know, mom. I'm, you know, trying to be a little healthier. You know, you always tell me to be healthy, so... I bought some like supplement things or something. Yeah. What did you buy? I don't know. I made some impulse buys on Amazon. I bought L theanine. Theanine? L theanine. What it's, is that? It's the ingredient in green tea. Oh. But it, you know, so it's like the calming ingredient. Right. Um, L theanine. And, you know, I, I'm not one to do these kind of, this kind of stuff. Like, I don't do all this. Like, so I, this is not, this is not me. Like, yeah. this is not something I do. But I thought, you know, it's like ten bucks on Amazon. Let's just give it a shot. So I bought this big bag, and it's just like <laughs> it's just like a big bag of powder, and I've been putting it in my Lacroix, and I I ha I felt like a little bit of like I don't know, I feel more calm, mm. more I don't want to say focused per se, but I think it's just like less distracted in a way. Yeah. Huh. Um, I Is it? Know. Did you get one of these Amazon elements? I, I I forget which one I got. Um, it's just. It's just straight up L theanine. It's just like a bag of powder. All right, cool. And is that it? Is that all you bought for bought, for supplements? I bought another thing. Uh, I think it was like Alpha Alpha some, Brain. Similar. I think it's something similar. Maybe it's like a knockoff brand of that, um, which is like a. I believe it's called a nootropic. I didn't do any research. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just I'm eating these chemicals. Didn't do any research. You know how it goes. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know exactly how that one's it, how that one's affected me i think that's something that affects your memory yeah um so it's a little bit harder to really quantify right well listening to uh joe rogan is he big on this well he owns i think i think he owns on it i don't have this brand but it's similar to whatever you're looking at right now well apparently they've done a lot of testing with on it <laughs> And, I, well, yeah, and it's I, the real deal. Well, I mean, they're selling stuff, so they're gonna do, they're gonna market it as good as I can, um, for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, these these things aren't like crazy, you know, enhancing. Like, it's not you're not you're not gonna take it and have amazing ideas, right? But I think, you know, if you have a kind of a routine, it can it can sharpen your routine. I think. Right. Um, I don't know. It's it's something I've been dabbling in a little bit. Thought thought I'd update that, and then also I've just been doing like the. The VR stuff. Um, oh, I guess we talked about that last episode. I had the the new index. You should try it out. Um, just, oh yeah, just, like the resolution on that thing's crazy. Um, and uh, is it like anti gravity sketch? <laughs> yeah, when you put it on, you float away into another world. <laughs> if it it has jet powered uh, adapters on the side, and you just like fly. That's beautiful. <laughs> um, oh, and I also ordered some more ball openers. For oh wow 
Been working on some packaging too. How, how many bottle openers did you get? A thousand. <laughs> One thousand? Yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> Is that the demand? Um, I mean, I sold out of the first hundred pretty quick. It was like a month. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I've had some inquiries about some retail stuff. Yeah. And I've been wanting to tr- test the waters on that and see how that goes. Cool. Um, so, yeah, I just went in, sent sent, Dude. sent a bunch of money to... <laughs> go big or go home. I just sent a bunch of money to, like, a Chinese gmail address and just cross my fingers through paypal i was like oh yeah i don't think yeah i don't think the irs is coming for your money nick i think <laughs> you think china's coming yeah, for money? for sure um i also was working on some packaging the thing about packaging is i'm not a packaging designer or a graphic designer um <laughs> so i just like made this little illustrator document and and uh sent some packaging over it's just a square box it's nice um you can see it on the video if you are watching the video but uh, it has this little sleeve, and it kind of comes out like an apple apple box. So it has that kind of like slow, kind of like, and uh, as that, uh, I was pretty pleased with it. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, yeah. I think that's that's a lot of updates, James. That is a lot of updates, but uh, I mean, you know, we have been gone for a while. For a while. Um, I mean, me more than you, but yeah. Uh, design news design news i think this is kind of interesting because last episode we threw in our quick little update on the apple keynote oh. which i know that you know i know that you probably wouldn't have enjoyed let's that. get another camera on there shall we <laughs> um but i thought just this week microsoft had a keynote where yeah. they released a few products and you know we don't really give microsoft any credit so we do not. We thought we'd just mention this, and I thought I didn't. I didn't watch keynote. I didn't even know it was there happening. But uh, <laughs> everybody's got a keynote. Um, Everybody, we should do a keynote. Well, we should have done a keynote do to a release key- the pin. Like <laughs> we should have rented out an auditorium and done an entire keynote. Oh man! Throw just, sh- like showed some shots of the process. <laughs> Got Johnny Ive to narrate it, you know, the usual. Right. It is uh, chrome nickel, chrome plated nickel. Aluminium. Um, yeah. So Microsoft released, I guess, these folding devices or no, they didn't release it. I think this is more of a future tech thing. Yeah. Um, I think one of them was a, more of a laptop iPad size and then one was more of a phone size. Yeah. Very large phone. Uh, but it folds out has two screens can you know kind of like a book it says coming coming next year yeah so there's the there's the surface duo phone and then there's the surface neo yeah so the neo is the more ipad size one yeah you know i guess the neo i I would assume is like the size of a large ipad and then it just folds in half yeah that's the best way to explain it yeah I, I feel like... What do you think about these folding trends, James? I don't know. I, I am not on the folding game. I'm not. It's like it's like uh, reversible clothing. It's like... <laughs> or is it like is it like the pants that turn into shorts with the zippers? Oh. <laughs> did you ever well, have... Well, yeah. Did you ever you, have this? I feel like maybe that's a better metaphor <laughs> because you can, like, you can very easily see where the shorts end and the pants begin. Have I told you the story? Like I had those, I had those pants. I have a story too about that. Weekend. Okay, I had those pants, and then like I wore the just the shorts during the summer, and of course, like they got washed. Okay, but we didn't wash the bottom halves with them. So like, I was on that color blocking trend before anybody. Like, Wait, they, were they were they, they were like shades whiter. What what they were khakis. They? khakis. <laughs> they were like shades. So you shades the, lighter than the uh the bottoms like a almost like a skin tone shorts and then you got like nice camel color yeah. legs oh yeah calves yeah my uh my it reflected <laughs> it looked like a summer tan you know my um my my pants short what do you call them short pants i don't know what we call them <laughs> what it well Con- convertible I, pants convert my story is like so i when i was a kid i wanted these things these are these are cool right like these were like whoa they're multifunctional right right and I think I was with my dad, and I was like, "Dad, Dad, let's go get some of the, these pants." And my dad was like, oh, 
I guess you know, I, obviously you know, he doesn't. He's not the one to go shopping in the, right in the mall and buy these pants, right? But he does anyways. And we go, and I think I tried on pants that were like way too small or something. But I was young, and I didn't really realize like, oh, they shrink even more. Oh, and so like I come home and I show them off to my mom, and then my mom's just like, "What in the world? You <laughs> bought first of all, you bought these pants. These are ugly." <laughs> And then they're way too small. And then, yeah, my dad got in trouble. Oh, yeah. man, your mom lit you up, huh? Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, it's probably for the better. Like, was this a good fashion choice? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. Uh, but it looks like, I don't know, a lot of these say they're just kind of, they're like zip leg pants. Oh, zip leg pants. Okay. I don't know if that's the official term, but <laughs> are they coming back? Oh, zip off. Zip off. Zip off? I don't zip know. leg? <laughs> Silver Ridge convertible pants. They're, 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 I mean, they are what? convertible pants. Hey, give it, give it. I mean, thirty year trend, man. It's gonna come back. It's gonna come back. I mean, dad, dad trends coming back already. I feel like we're in peak dad trend. I feel right like now. the coolest way to wear these though is like maybe with like a, like them half zipped, oh, like I was, unzipped. I was gonna say one is off and one is on. Whoa. Well, that's for like the bikers out there, right? Because like they always they'll like fold up their pants when they go bike riding so that you don't get in the chain or oh, whatever. That's a good so. Yes. And we are becoming a, a a biking people. Yeah. So like, if you want to be, you want to have as much coverage as possible because it's only your right leg that's yeah. next to the chain. Right. So you know you can have your left leg panted and your yeah. right leg short. Yeah. Mm. I that's a. I think we're onto something there. That works. Check out our merch. We're we're on we're doing a new merch. <laughs> <laughs> zip pants. That zip would be pants. pretty amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, I feel like we. Oh, we, I wanted to. Oh, we we digressed yeah, we didn't from fin- our Microsoft. We didn't finish the Microsoft segment. Um, I also wanted to talk about Microsoft's new earbuds, the Surface earbuds. Oh yeah. And when I saw these, I was I was quite impressed. Like this is something that I actually got excited about for once from Microsoft. Yeah. Um, I. They they're just circle. Yeah. circular earbuds instead of the airpods which are kind of like you know you cut the cords off a bunch of ear, uh, earbuds they're circles and they just fit in your ear they're wireless and i think aesthetically they feel much better than any other thing i've seen on the market mm. the thing with these wireless earbuds is they always look a little odd sticking out of someone's ear yeah i don't know if you feel that way but i feel like you know the airpods are kind of like drooping down there's always like you know People are talking about like, oh yeah, it looks like you got like Q-tips sticking out of your ears. Right, but well, the circles just feel a little bit more resolved or simple. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, Nick, what? but Microsoft is not the first people to do the circular earbud. Let me, wait, you Let got... me clue you in to a futurist named Will. I am. Does he do Beats? Yeah. What are the Beats you, ones? Do you not know? No, no, no. He does. Uh, are they Beats? No, they're they're I am. They're these earbuds. No, but they got cords on it. Well, this was this was before the cordless age, mm. but uh, he was going in on those circles well before Microsoft. I mean, do you not know who Will I Am is? No, I know he's part of the Black Eyed Peas. Or yeah, right. Have you never seen the Will I Am like future? It's a super deluxe video of mm. like compilations yeah. of him you're like me he's now. like you're with a, bill gates I'm, this, talking about the future so god um i gotta teach you culture sometime nick yeah oh we have that on our topic list <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i i thought that the new surface earbuds were i don't know it, it was just pretty elegant yeah it was just something that like i'm like oh you know maybe i should start like paying attention to these product launches that microsoft's yeah. doing the problem is, is that if you were to switch over to anything like Microsoft away from Mac, you just have to adopt everything Microsoft, right? Yeah. Or everything Google or, you know, it's I, with the ecosystems in play. I mean, it's like, would you really have like a pair? Uh, maybe it's no. different with like the no. phone and tablet right. laptop thing. I, I will say that the actual case for these ear ear pods earbuds is not as elegant in my opinion. I thought I think it, the AirPod case is way po- more pocket friendly. It looks like yeah. It, well, the case I, the case for these circular earbuds is like a slot that's uh, extruded. Let's be clear, 
none of these cases are pocket friendly. They're all like bulbousy, bulgy. Right. I, like, but but the most pocket friendly, I would argue, is AirPods. Although I haven't done. I don't know. Much what about the research. Samsung? I I just think that just as like I think Apple has just don't don't fanboy on me right now. <laughs> I can feel you distilled, about the fanboy. They have just distilled the form I guess, to the nth degree, I guess so that they're just bulbous they're as just well. a little bit more compact. I uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't think any of them have really solved that problem. I, I think, mean, I think the AirPods are amazing. I think what needs to come back are cargo shorts just for all these AirBud cases. <laughs> the cargo shorts right now. Well, let's let's buy some. Uh, no, I'm let's not ready. Let's buy a thousand of I them. I am not an early adopter of trends. Uh, huh. Fashion trends. I do other trends, but not fashion trends. Well, yeah, I don't know. I think you could get some cargo shorts and then you could like have like plants growing out of the cargos. Is that a and thing? that would be just like so, you would be so ahead of the curve with plants. Yeah, it's like you're you're a hipster. Like portable plants, you could like walk around the plant. Yeah, like, whoa, my grass watch man. Hey, let's get that back. That's up. that's old. Um, but uh, old yeah, I feel like Microsoft doesn't get their due when it comes to design, and like I have especially loved like the surface products over the past couple of years. Yeah. Like they, the mixed materials. They do have some nice design. The, the surface, they've like really the surface done pro. They've really come back in the past decade. When's the last time you felt a surface surface pro? Um, I mean, I have what this, the six surface pro six. Yeah. Is that the newest one? Did, did I they think I send you one? Yeah. Microsoft sent me. Yeah. One. Um, it's yeah. a, it's a nice thing. I mean, it's a, it's a fully functioning computer. I use it occasionally. Nice. Um, but yeah, what net what Netflix shows? Oh wait, <laughs> you don't. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. I think all the tech companies are actually getting on par hardware wise. Yeah. These days, which was Apple's strong suit, and now it seems like you know what's Apple going to do? Like they're kind of behind on the other stuff. I feel Software, like software or services. I feel like Apple is in. They're going to be in a lull for a little bit. Yeah. Until until something until we get into like the AR age. Yeah, that's why I don't really care for the folding phones. I'm ready for glasses. Right. Like I don't want to go from a phone to a folding phone. I want to go from phone to glasses. Right. That's the step I want to take. Yeah. Um. Let's. I think maybe this will just be a catch up episode. We can get to some questions. I don't know. Yeah. What, how you feel about let's that. Let's get to some questions. Okay, but before we do that. We wanted to take a quick segment. This is going to be a new segment. This is uh, going to be a break or an ad or something. I don't really know how to form this segment yet. I mean, I'm not going to splice it. We'll just talk through it. But right, um, we're we're excited. We want to announce something. Yeah, we are partnering up part partnering up with Let's Design Daily. Heck yeah. Um, they are a design blog on Instagram, and then their website, I believe, is designdaily.in. Mm-hmm. Um. You know, they're posting all kinds of interesting designs. And, you know, they reached out. They wanted to help us and cross-promote our work. Um, so definitely go check out Design Daily if you guys haven't already. Um, give them a follow. Um, let let them know who sent you. And, yeah, you know, we'll see where the partnership goes from here. You know, we, we have some things in the talks, but uh, we're super excited to, to have them on board. Yeah. Um, and then also we got to promote our pins. So oh yeah. If you guys want a pin, come on, buy guys. A pin. We sold a, we sold one or two in the past month. Nice. We also <laughs> uh, one of the one of the perks of coming to a meetup. Oh yeah. We, yeah. Uh, if you come to a meetup, we got pins for you. We got pins for you. Um. Oh, I also thought maybe this is like a segment to promote your own products, James. If you want to promote your bottle opener. I mean, uh, we talked about it at length already, so maybe not. Yeah. Maybe I in mean, the future we could, like, maybe when we, in the future when we have these brands even built out even more, we could, like, promote our own products or something. Yeah. Well, the Wayne bottle opener, there's only a handful left. Oh, you better snag so it quick then. Snag it up before they're gone. Yeah. I'll, I'll let you guys know when my bottle opener is in stock again. Um, so, anyway, let's, uh, yeah, let's move on to some questions. Okay. Um, all right, so this one comes from an anonymous person, and they say, oh, actually, well, uh, 
I'm gonna answer. I'm gonna say this question, but I, we also have a voicemail from my dad. I thought it'd be good oh. to play. Um, so if you have a question yourself, send it to minor details podcast at gmail.com. That's the best way for us to receive the questions. Right. Um, yeah, I think there was a few coming through the Instagram DMs, but I they're totally gone now. I lost them. So. Oh no. Gmail guys, Gmail. Um, this one comes from an anonymous person, and they say. After having over a year of industry experience, I would like to start applying for ID jobs again. However, I'm struggling with updating my portfolio. I wanted to show potentials empl- potential employers what I've learned in the last year working in the industry with real restrictions and, de- and deadlines. The projects I've worked on are not yet on the market, and even if they even even when they do come on the market, I will not be allowed to show the process behind them because of confidentiality reasons. I assume a lot of young designers have this issue and I was wondering what is the best slash common approach to this. So you design a product, maybe you are fresh out of school, maybe looking for a new job and you can't really show the work yet. You know, what's the best tactic? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a couple things you can do. Of course, uh, I don't think that there's anything necessarily keeping you from showing this work to people if you go in for an interview. Well, um, what do you mean? Is it, I, I I think the way it's worded is like hey, I might have, I might anything. have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, so yeah, so this person is fresh out of school. They are they've designed some products that have not been released to the market yet. Yeah. Um, and are not, you're not even allowed to show the process of it. So when they are released, but are they only not allowed to show the process because like they're not allowed to show it publicly? No. Like, so why couldn't they show it privately? Like why, why can they show it in an interview with a portfolio? I think you probably could. Um, it depends on the contract. I mean, if there's like an NDA of like, hey, you can't Well, show. yeah, if you're going to a competitor, I don't think that that's kosher. But if you are going to somebody in an unaffiliated industry, you could absolutely, absolutely show your process work for something that's like maybe not even launched. Yeah. I mean, what... Ha- okay, let's... It, let's say in a world where like they were legally bound to not show any work, any process work. Mm-hmm. And once once the product's released, maybe they could say that they worked on it and they designed it, but they couldn't show any of the, the process for that. Yeah. Like, what do you, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, maybe I, that's something you just have to talk with your boss about. Right. I, yeah, it, I think, I think it's always, it is good to like, yeah, talk to your boss or whoever about it, but I don't know. I mean, I think you're just going to have to use your best judgment in that in that case. Right. I mean, I'm not going to say you're going to get caught showing your work like, to an employer. Like, who are you working for? You're not working for the government. Like, Maybe. I are you releasing this, government this secrets? Do anonymous. you have the codes to Area 51? <laughs> like, um, I just, I feel like how sensitive can the information really be if they're if they're showing it to somebody in an unaffiliated industry? Like if they're going if they're going straight to their competitor, absolutely you probably like that's right. that is like an ethical like no no. Right. But if they're going to somebody else, yeah, like I if don't you're go, know. if you're going from like like tech to kitchenware. Right. Uh, yeah, that's a tough one. I so yeah, maybe the best advice for that is just to talk to your boss about it or talk to someone about it. Um well the the only problem <laughs> The the only the only problem is is that, um, like, they're they would be talking to their boss about leaving. Right. That's the that's the catch. Like, it's a tough one, right? So, like, if their boss wouldn't take that personally, and th- this one is after having one year experience too. This person that only has one year of industry experience. I'm I am curious why they're interested in leaving their job. I mean, it might not be maybe the best experience. Maybe they want to. Yeah, but I, I'm, you know, this is this is something that I've been encountering lately. Is just like thinking about thinking back on my first job and yeah. how much I hated it one year in, and then now how much I appreciate it in retrospect. I'm just like, what part do you appreciate? I like do you what what part did you hate and what about that did you appreciate? I, I'm trying to. 
I feel like I need to be a little bit political about this, but I like I just felt like there were certain projects that I was working on that I just was not happy to be working on. Okay. Because they like, you know, because in school it was like, hey, you like design is important. We need to work on important things. Right. And this and is then like in the, and then in the real world plastic you're like crap. Yeah, you're you might not be designing the most glamorous thing, right. but I would say that like those broad like I was caught in a project like that that didn't really end up going anywhere. But then I worked on a lot of other projects that I thought were actually kind of cool and gave me a lot of independence and authority over what I was working on and also allowed me to learn manufacturing, like like all the aspects of manufacturing, right. Right. like to make something real, uh, you know. So I there there's a part of me that looks back on that now and is like, that was actually a really great job. Yeah, for sure. No. And and so, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people like to focus on the negative, which is not good. Um, so, like, I, I agree. I think there's definitely a lot of positive that can come out of it if you just, you know, self-steer yourself right. toward that. Like, search out that positive uh, yeah. experience. Um, I do want to touch on the, the one thing you said about design, like, the crap, but then you actually got to design other things. I feel like this doesn't get talked enough about is that you will have, well, maybe you won't have to, but the majority of designers are going to have to design that plastic crap thing yeah. that they don't want to design. Right. And if you come out of school with the expectation that you are going to like design the, the most amazing, like save the world device, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah. And so like, I just want to set that expectation for you guys that it's not impossible, but just realize that you might have to design one or two of those things. And you know, Maybe you do get to work on some of the awesome projects, like you said. Right. Yeah. One thing that I said to, and I'm not sure if I said this on the podcast, one of the things that I said to the students at ASU, because somebody asked me a question about, you know, industrial design as, as a, like a hazardous, wasteful profession right. type deal. Yeah. And like wanting to do that kind of world saving, those kind of world saving products. It's like, you don't, you don't just get to do those projects unless you are like extremely talented or ex or an extremely like seasoned designer. Like you might fall into those kind of kind of companies accidentally maybe. Right. But the reality is is that you will like like you know, I I did the the job that I wasn't necessarily all that pumped about. Right. But now I feel like the companies that I'm working for, I feel really good about working for because I feel like they are pushing things forward. Yeah. And I don't think I would have gotten the opportunity and been able to contribute to that opportunity unless I had gone through that first job. I totally agree. So you just, you have to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, we're, we're diving back into last week's topic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, I, oh, I did want to give one more piece of advice to anonymous. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, talk to someone who maybe could give you advice on that, on the legal aspect of it. But the other side of this, this issue is this is a good chance for you to go home and do some side projects, right? Maybe do the Instagram thing, you know, it's inktober, you know, start sketching. Yeah. Maybe, maybe do a sketch and then, you know, maybe you do a little prototype of that as well. Um, I yeah. Think. And I would say maybe another piece of uncommon advice would be to like, if you know where you want to work and you are somebody who's on Instagram or whatever, like start building relationships mm. with people that are in those industries or, you know, people that you know that work at those firms, like start messaging them. Like I, I just um, did a Skype in to Virginia Tech the other day. And one of the things that I've realized about my career is like one of the reasons why I think I've been a fairly successful freelancer is because when I make relationships with people, it's it's because I'm genuinely interested in making those relationships and making those connections. Sure. It's yeah. not because like I'm like, oh, man, like I'm just waiting to ask <laughs> for to get that job. Right. Right. You exactly. know, it's like I want to get to know people in the community because everybody like. 
I have not met an uninteresting person in the community, especially if they're talented, especially if they're like working at some place really cool. Like I want to know what their life is like, what their design life is like. And you know, you can get some really cool friends in the process. Like start, start reaching out like to those people yeah. on, on Instagram. And also if you want to join our community. Yeah. Discord. Discord. Um, no, I've actually made pretty, some great connections on discord too. Yeah. Um, so that's another good place. Um, cool. Okay. I hope that helped. Uh, all right. You want to listen to this? Uh, Oh yeah. Let's listen. Voicemail from my dad. Um, also if you want to send a Google voicemail, you can leave your voice and the number is one six, four, six, four, nine, four, 4011. Oh yeah. All right. Let's see what my dad has to say. Hang on. Good afternoon. This message is for James from the Wishful Farmer. James, I just wanted to congratulate you on your brand. Also, wanted to commend you for the thank you notes. Hey, it never goes out of style. I've been writing three per week for 10 years, and it's amazing what a difference it makes. Keep it up the good work, boys. <laughs> Thanks for sending in, Dad. Yeah. Thank you notes, man. Hey, man, I mean, when you're only selling 20 of something, like, yeah, and, and you're starting something out, I mean, those those first customers mean a lot. And so I felt like it wasn't, <laughs> you know, and also my bottle opener is on the pricier end because of the process. So it's like any sort of added thing to that to enrich the experience is worth it. Yeah. And uh, it is how I genuinely feel about those people who buy buy bottle openers buy sure. from that first run is like, I am really thankful. And so, uh, yeah. That's a good little tidbit. I think it's also important to note that like there's a very big difference between like just sending an email, thank you. Yeah. And an uh, actual physical piece of paper that's hand- handwritten. Right. My dad always made me write thank you notes. <laughs> Maybe that's why I, I don't like them anymore because I'm just like, oh, I'm forced <laughs> to do it. Um, Good man. All right. Uh, next question. You want to read this one? Yeah. Ben Gradle. Um, hi, Nick and James. Hey, Ben. I have heard a lot that the best ideas come to us when we take a shower. <laughs> I know I've had many an epiphany while doing so and wanted to know what you think. Companies will have gyms, restaurants, and more on site, but what about the benefits designers uh, benefits designers can have like access to taking a break and shower during the work day? I, I, thought, I, I thought this was I just don't a fun know. question. Well, okay. So Ben, here's here's something that I found while I was uh, freelancing at Peloton, I would go to a spin class in the middle of the day, a Peloton class, and would take a shower and go back to work. So it was like a half an hour spin class, and I'd just get like a protein shake afterward. And the thing that I found was it often, like it had the effect of completely rebooting the day. That's interesting. Which was like amazing because usually you have to do that with copious amounts of coffee. <laughs> uh, but this was a much healthier alternative. And yeah, it was it was interesting. But I don't know, Nick. Like, don't you think that kind of like any sort of break that you can take can really refresh yeah, your I, mind? I don't necessarily I don't necessarily think it's uh the shower itself i think it's just the fact that you're doing like a monotonous task where right. your conscious brain is turned off and you are on autopilot and that autopilot mode lets your your you know that idea float to the top there's nothing pushing it down yeah you're not think of anything yeah um so yeah i think there's the those tasks during the day that you can get on autopilot for i it is kind of funny to like think of taking a shower just to come up with ideas in the middle of the day. <laughs> like, I can't think of any ideas. Let me take a shower. I, I, also... I just like imagine Ben like walking away from his desk, coming back completely soaked and like, guys, I've got this great idea. Or I, I, I can see Ben like he's, he's like sketching. He's like, I can't come up with anything. Goes and takes a shower. comes back, sketches maybe one or two things. He's like, ah, oh, 
Still nothing. <laughs> goes, goes back. <laughs> takes another. <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. I, I also, I think your idea about exercising in the middle of the day is kind of interesting. Yeah. Just to experiment with. I mean, I, it, I mean, I don't do much exercise. I did run that one time and I announced it on the podcast. Remember that? <laughs> that was just once. Um, is that also going to be quarterly? <laughs> Quarterly, yeah. Is that your quarterly report? <laughs> right, quarterly run. Um, I always think that when you do exercise, there is that kind of release of dopamine and yeah. uh, endorphins that that kind of clear your mind. For sure. Um, yeah, I think, uh, but I think your, your, um, your point about those kind of, uh, what kind of tasks did you say that they were? Autopilot. Autopilot. Yeah. Yeah, I think that autopilot mode, I think like, you're in the act of doing something that you're so familiar with. Right. So you can let your mind wander. I mean, I wonder if there's something akin to that that you could driving. do. Driving. But driving's stressful. Like, the thing about a shower is it's relaxing. I mean, I guess for all you guys, that ha- I have a Tesla. So I... <laughs> <laughs> you do not. I'm kidding. I you, maybe you have Tesla. Tesla roller skates. I don't know. <laughs> One day I'll have Tesla. But uh, I... Uh, yeah, I wonder if there's some sort of like relaxing task because like the other thing that people used cleaning, to do was, cleaning? was like go out and like do like a cigarette break. Yeah. Like, you know, that's... Not promoting smoking. No, we are not promoting smoking. Um, but uh, but yeah, I just like, I'm trying to think of a task aside from eating or driving that you might do during the day to get like the ideas flowing. I mean... Maybe it would be as simple as like taking taking paper and doing like the sketch exercises. Oh, like just sketch aerobics, like drawing lines. Yeah, drawing, drawing lines. It's not a bad idea. Especially when you're just doing CAD all day. Like, I don't know if you found this, but at my last job and like sometimes like currently, if I'm doing a lot of CAD, a lot of times I will have to just like stop doing CAD for a second just to like draw something because otherwise it just i i feel like a prisoner of cad yeah you know yeah i can see that so i don't know that's an interesting one i'm wondering if anybody anybody on the discord has has some good ideas of like how to uh yeah release those ideas yeah if you guys have something post it up um all right should we do one more question or skip to the shadow uh why not we do one more? Okay, cool. Uh, this one comes from Ing- Ingrid, and mm-hmm. they ask, I was wondering what your thoughts are on studying abroad for industrial slash manufacturing engineering students. Uh, will foreign studies help stand out in the job market, or is it likely to be a waste of time? Uh, with these kinds of careers, it's often repeated with, it's who you know more than what you know. And I wanted to hear your personal experience with this idea. So is studying abroad worth it in the job market? Um, or is it just a waste of time? Uh, Nick, you did a study abroad. You did a pretty yeah. substantial study abroad. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, so I, I studied abroad in, in France. Uh, SCAD has a, a remote campus in Lacoste, France, which, which is in southern France. Um, Lacoste is in like... Like the brand, the, the brand, but it, I don't think are there a lot of alligators in Lacoste, France? Definitely not. There's no <laughs> alligators. No, um, I don't think the brand is related to the city or the town. I see. Um, I think it might be just a coincidence or something, but um, yeah, I, I think maybe generally my gut reaction to this question is studying abroad doesn't necessarily help you professionally, mm-hmm. although it, it could, it just really depends on your study abroad experience. But I think it helps you as a, you know, as a person. Yeah. It helps build the character and, like, build your your viewpoint of the world. Um, so, I, like, maybe as a side effect, you know, building that, that more worldview does help you relate more in your career. Um, but I don't think it, like, directly, like, I don't think an employer is like, oh, I see you studied abroad in, in France. Like, check mark he's good you know, i don't really see that unless it's applicable to whatever the the company is i don't know what do you think oh here here it comes all right so 
I I also I studied abroad right after school. I was able to squeeze one in after graduation. Oh, really? Still with Virginia Tech. Where'd you go? Uh, Spain and France. Okay. But then after it was about a month of of like yeah, like a travel study abroad. After that, I went off on my own. And here's the thing that I will say about that is like, I think that like, while it's great to do a study abroad, I also think just like traveling on your own or with like a small group, I do think that there's like a lot of benefit, especially for somebody coming out of college. Like I think getting, getting as much perspective on the world before you enter the workplace and also just like getting rid of the FOMO of like... (laughs) of like not studying abroad or like seeing the world before right. you start working. Cause, cause once you start working, you can kind of get swept up in it. But the other thing is, is that I very much feel like I, you know, I was going from like hostel to hostel yeah. throughout Europe and by myself. And it was like, okay, how do I, how do I make friends quickly? Like, how do I interact with, you know, brand new people. Like, how do I traverse this social landscape that you don't know the language? That, and I'm, yeah. Well, I mean, when you're at a hostel, you're like, there's like Australians mostly. Right. There's like, there's there's some Americans, <laughs> Dive Canadians, down the Australian hole again. <laughs> but it's like, um, <clears throat> I feel like it can be a really great experience for you to build up your confidence when it comes to meeting new people. Yeah, for and sure. that I think is really valuable. Like once you get into the into the workplace or Definitely. like you're meeting people per, perspective employers like how do you engage with these people cuz like how many people ha- how many situations have you really had where like college you you go you show up at college and you maybe like make some friends through studio through a circumstance right but like you're going to Europe you're meeting strangers all the time. Yeah. Like, how do you handle those situations? The other thing that studying abroad or just traveling through Europe helped me to do was navigate New York. Like, once I had come <laughs> back, because I had to navigate all sorts of mass transit systems. Yeah, you learn. You learn. So coming back to New York, I was like, I got this. No worries. Yeah, the transit systems are always confusing the first time. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you are. I feel like it's always just confusing. It's It is. It can be very confusing. Take some time to learn. But I, I think, yeah, I think study abroads can be really amazing experiences. Yeah, I think all those soft skills are as, is, you know, studying abroad is just builds those skills up. And, you know, those skills are pretty invaluable uh, for getting a job. So, like, I think, like, as a side effect, yes, studying abroad will definitely help you get a job. Yeah. But I don't think it, like, directly, like, it's not going to put, if you post it up on your resume, unless it's some obscure. Well, I mean, let's not get back. <laughs> Let's not get back into the resume thing. <laughs> the resume. I feel like, you know, who knows? Like it could you put a, you put on there that you oh, went to a I, certain I was, country? Yeah, I was from Nepal, you know. I was from southern <laughs> France. I was from Who goes to Nepal for a study abroad? If you want to climb an Everest or something. <laughs> that'd be a sweet study abroad, man. That would be crazy. I, half the people I mean what, ten percent of people die climbing Everest? That's insane to me. Um um, but yeah, probably two of your classmates would, not, and not make you know, it. you're also just exposing yourself to like beautiful, like if you're going to Europe or somewhere like that, Oh yeah. Or I mean, anywhere in the world, you can expose yourself to beautiful design, beautiful architecture, like that has the complete, foundations completely different of those, those too. industries. Cause every, all the, all the different areas have like a different style. Yeah. So, um, all right. We're going a little long, but that's okay. Yep. You want to shout out of the week? We got a shout out of the week. Yeah. And uh, I don't remember how I found this person. Oh, I think I think they liked one of my posts and I hadn't posted in a while. Yeah. So like it's like who's this? And um there is this it's a it's a YouTube channel and it's also she's on Instagram. Yes, yeah, so this is Design Plus Morna. Yeah. Um and I've watched a few of her videos. I, I've subscribed to her channel. So I think her story is that she is she's an industrial designer, but she's also a design educator. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, I th- I believe this is you know, uh, yeah, we're I... we're really good at research. Remember, <laughs> uh, yeah. So she's an educator, but she makes these like very 
like well-informed, really nice video essays about different topics around design. I, I like it because she gets into the details, you know? Yeah. And we like the details here on Minor Details. So. Yeah. And, and she I, talks about like form development or inspiration or like, I mean, she even breaks down. I was watching one video where she had a folding chair. Yeah. And she was breaking down why the design of this chair is successful. And yeah. it's purely, she's just breaking down form. She's like, it's successful because most of the form is is rectilinear, but then there's a hierarchy of form because there's a, a circular hinge here and it really makes the hinge pop. And then the form's repeated and the seat has a circular depression. I, right. I, think, I just think she does a really great job of explaining things. So it's... I, I, she's on Instagram uh, at design underscore plus underscore Morna, I believe. Yes. Uh, but I believe her YouTube channel is maybe the more uh, uh, educational side. Yeah. So, I mean, I think this can be a really good resource for students or people just interested in design in general. But I think all these things are just like, you know, even for uh, experienced professionals, these are good things to like meditate on. For sure. And like, I, I'm just like always interested to hear uh, another person's perspective on, yeah. on these various details. Definitely. So check her out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, you guys know the usual, I need, we need to get our ratings up on iTunes or Apple podcasts. You yeah. Know, pull up that app, open it up, give that five star quick, write a little review. <laughs> uh, quick subscribe on youtube spotify spotify google play Actually, i thought it was google podcast yeah, they changed it to google podcast <laughs> <laughs> i was correct don't myself. play on google anymore uh um, just google podcast yeah uh what else oh intro and outro by the amazing kiyoshi the kid as always um and yeah guys i'm at nick p baker and i'm at i draw receipts peace out later